<laughs> okay. All right. We want to welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. So thank you for being here. I'm Minister Dr. Renee Sunday. And we actually going to talk about something, you know, I've been through it and I know you've been through it. That's why so many people are here. Uh, what do you do when someone has done you wrong? Okay. What do you do? Okay. Now we're going to go in prayer and then we're going to jump right in here. As the old people say, we're not going to keep you long, but uh, let me know, put in the chat, make sure you can hear me. And then we're going to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you right now just thanking you, Lord, for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. We just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for our families. Lord, we thank you that all is well. Lord, we know we would never get it right. So we thank you, thank you, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, that took care of everything for us, our salvation. You give us grace and mercy every day. That is new. We thank you for loving us more than we love ourselves. Lord, we just pray that things will be said that we can help each other, Lord, because we want to be a light to someone so we can show them to you because you are our light and you are our salvation. We thank you for allowing us to be part of your plan. And you know, in Jeremiah's, your plan is the best for us. Lord, we just thank you that we would apply to our life that we actually will make a change. These are not the blessings of our son, Jesus, name, Christ is our redeemer. Amen, amen, and amen. <laughs> okay, so the reason that this came to me, uh, a couple of people asked me about it. And if you don't know me, I'm very transparent. <laughs> uh, and because I'm a minister, because I'm a doctor, I'm an anesthesiologist, I'm a media personality, so I'm kind of out there a little bit. Okay, I'll just be honest. Uh, God has entrusted me with so many things to do, but you have to be delivered from people. I'm, I'm telling you, you have to be, if you don't remember anything in the time we're going to be on here, you have to be delivered from people. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure you can hear me right. Okay. Okay, Phoenix. Okay, but you have to make sure. Oh, thank you of the hearts. I, ooh, thank you. A lot of hearts already. But you have to make sure that I mean, that's a challenge because you know what? I'm you know, I'm, I'm from I'm a middle child. And you know what goes with the middle child? You know, we're the Abraham kind of the family and you have to stay neutral. <laughs> but I kind of wanted people to say you done a good job. I kind of wanted people to say, we're proud of you. You know, my parents did that all the time. So I thought people would do that in the workplace, would do that at the church. But as we know, people don't. Okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm just being on it. People, people don't. I just be on who are we supposed to actually get our appreciation, get our elevation. All that comes from our heavenly father all about him. And so we're going to talk about what do you do when someone has done you wrong? And see, you know, they have done you wrong and this apply if they know they did you wrong. And if they don't know all of these things, we can actually apply to our lives when somebody has done us wrong. Now we actually, we are relationship people. You know, that's how God created us. But everybody, as the saying say, everybody not saved. Everybody is not at the same place you are. I'm just being real. A lot of people have, we all have skeletons in our closet, all of us. But what we mess up, let's go right to the word. Psalms 118.8 says, put your confidence in him, meaning God. Now, of course, in Jesus, you know, they three in the Holy Spirit, not in man. Do not put your confidence in man. Now, so what comes with confidence? Confidence means that you trust them. You trust them. You should never have a man. When I say man, that includes women. Man or woman, we should never put our 100% trust in them. And I know some of the people on the line may be married, but guess what? You're supposed to always put God first then the husband or the wife comes below that. And I mean, that's what the word says. But Psalms 118.8, for your reference on later, you can, you can look at that. It says, do not put your confidence in man. You need to put your confidence in God. And let me tell you, the reason you put it in God, because God, 
has done everything for you. Now, you know how man is. Man will be with you one minute, and the next minute, they won't support you. I mean, that can happen in the same day. We're not talking about the next year. But you know what I have learned as the saying, that, that saying, this cliche that people say is very true. The, uh, the, what it is now, I'm going to get it right. Next level, new devil. And that, that is pretty true. Because as you go up in your purpose in life, your destiny in life, guess what? Your inner circle, and what I mean by inner circle, someone that you can actually tell anything to, and they would not let you stay in a, in a dump. They will actually elevate you and push you further in your destiny, okay? It's not, that's going to get real small. Now, a lot of people want to have a lot of, I know you want to have a lot of friends. I mean, I, that's how I grew up. Let me see. Somebody is saying they, uh, okay, Emmy, she's here. Okay. <laughs> they said they don't. Okay. 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 No, I'm, I'm not going to make that. <laughs> She was saying, was I going to make it a sermon? Oh, God. Amen. Amen. Of course, you know, God will lead me, of course. But uh, I'm sorry. But getting back, um, the thing is we have to remember is God will e elevate us. Okay? That's what the word says. He will elevate us in due season. That's in Ecclesiastes. There's a time and a place for everything. Now, we pray when you pray, I got to talk about this. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but this is in my spirit. When we pray, we pray that we believe it's already done. But we got to wait on what? God's timing. We got to wait on the right season and the right timing for him. Now, for example, I love this analogy T.D. Jakes use all the time. He said if he gave his son a set of keys to the car at three years old, that wouldn't have made sense. Now, the road was fine, the car was fine, the keys even was fine, but the three-year-old was not ready. He was not ready to tackle that machine of a car. Now, I think his son is in his 30s now. He'll do fine with a car, but that's what happens to us a lot of times. We want something right now, like we go to our favorite restaurant, when we order at one door, when we go to the other door, we want it to be already done. We can't do that with our destinies and things that in life. Because one, we're not ready. You have to prepare. You have to prepare and you have to be prepared for the ups and downs. It's not going to be easy. You know, actually, when you're in your purpose, things will go a little smoother because God will direct you. But you will still have ups and downs because you have to deal with people. <laughs> OK, so let's get on in the word a little bit more. The three things I want to approach today is the three things we need to do when someone does us wrong. And I'm going to just name the three just in case you have to get off. The first one is we need to pray. The second one is we need to we need to let go. Let it go like the kids say. And number three is we need to bless others and do good. Now, the scriptures we want to talk about, I got my Bible here because, you know, we got to have the word. <laughs> The first scripture, and I'm going to read, I'm a King James person, but some of the things I'm going to read is the uh, English uh, translation as well, the English standard version. But we're going to start off with Matthew 21, 22. And you see, I put my glasses on, but hallelujah, we're going to make sure we can see. <laughs> okay, it says 21 and 22. Uh -oh, okay, all things whatsoever we ask in prayer, believing that you will receive. See, I had kind of hit on that already. So when we pray, now that pray, you know, we have the model of the holy, the, the, the prayer in the Bible. We have the Matthew. He goes through and gives us a model prayer. You know, our heavenly father, which, you know, and John, you know, hallowed be our name, thy kingdom come. That's a model prayer. OK, but think about a prayer is just communication with God. So it doesn't have to be tailored up. It don't have to be a shape, form, or fashion to this unfriendly world. And actually, the Bible speaks on that. If you actually trying to make things a show, guess what? You've got your reward down here on earth. If you're trying to show off when you pray, especially at church or something like that, or if you at a, let's say if you're speaking in tongues at a restaurant, that may not be appropriate because nobody knows what you're saying. So don't try to show off or boast your anointing. We are here to not make people think we're spooky, <laughs> okay? 
We need to make sure that we are being appropriate in things we do. So if we pray in all these big prayers, I'm not, I'm not saying your prayer should be short, should be long. Guess what? God would tell you how long it can be. It needs to be the most important thing that I'm trying to emphasize is communication with God. Number two, it needs to be that you believe what you're asking God for or petitioning God for. Because guess what? I'm going to hold the Bible up. The Bible has everything we need in there. I mean, even marriage, divorce, all of that, even the things that's going on in the world now, the rumor wars with the uh, kids going against the parents. Guess what? That's in the Bible. Yes. But what we have to do as believers, we still have to believe. We still have to communicate with God. Now, the prayer, I got, I have to say this. I know I may be a little radical, but prayer is not for God. It's for us. <laughs> I know people say, well, I got to do this. And so God, a move. God has already moved. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. As the kids say, they chilling. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I want to take out of context, but he's done the work. What we need to do is we need to believe when we pray. And then we need to kind of rest after that. I mean, I like being on the laser board. I love laser board. I like, you know, and, and a lot of women like doing it. And men too, maybe like bubble baths and stuff. You just relaxing. You just relaxing. Okay. So the thing is you need to be as rest in his arms because God will send the right people. You know, in my spirit is some single ladies. God will send your right boys, the right one, not somebody we think that, should be hallelujah i've been there somebody you think is but you have to make sure it's the one god has sent for you and be pacific in your prayers okay i mean god wants you to be pacific in your prayers so prayer is just opening your mouth just like we talking now just like i'm talking to the world now you can talk to God. We don't have to go through a veil and I'm not nothing against the people that have to, you know, go through, you know, a priest, but we can go right to the father in Jesus name because Jesus took care of that. Because let me tell you, it would not be any animals left after all the stuff we did. And I put myself in it and I'm a minister. OK, all the stuff we have done. Guess what? It won't be no animals left because we'll have to sacrifice all the animals. I mean, I'm just being real because we, our, bet, our body, our flesh is sinful. Our nature is sin. That's what our nature is. That's why we have to trust God when the Holy Spirit comes in us to believe that he's going to direct and lead us. And he will. He always do that. Now, the next scripture is Luke 21, um, 36. Now, this one, let me see. It says... Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man. So what we need to, I just reiterate, we have to believe. We have to believe. Now that's my thing, but I don't believe it. I always say believe, trust, and walk it out. That's my little that thing I say, but I have to do that in every situation in my life. When my brother passed away, when, when, when they trying to say that, Every patient, every person in my house need an operation. We say, oh, no, because the word says that God has already, Isaiah 53 has healed. He's already healed us already. So what we need to do is believe it, bring it from the spiritual to the natural. And how you do that? You believe. We pray in belief. And we don't stick, we don't wish you wash it, as the kids say. We're not lukewarm, as the Bible says. We don't believe one day and don't believe the other day. We have to stand firm in his word. Stand firm. Stand fast, as the word says. So the most important thing I want to say about prayer, prayer is a communication with God. We don't have to use big words. You know, we can say, Jesus help us. Jesus will. Jesus loves us. Lord, help me. Oh, he hears that. He hears the long and the short. Okay. But you have we, we, I'm talking about we. We need to believe. Now, a lot of people have joined us, and forgive me, I, I've gotten uh, George Miller's here, Nancy's here, Christopher's here. Um, forgive me if I pronounce this wrong. Mal Lograti. I'm, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm bad with the with the name. I do please apologize, but I have a warm heart. I really do. Now, the next thing we want to talk about, number two, is what we said, let go. We have to let it go. 
You know, I think T.D. Jakes is one that says this a lot. Let go, let God. But we have to do that. Because let me tell you, the Bible also says the vengeance is him. It's his vengeance. Because think about, okay, let's say if uh, if I'm speeding and, and had a car accident and hit somebody and I left the scene. The police looking for me. I've done something wrong. Yeah, I've, I've committed a crime. But just think about if somebody, let's say for instance, one of your good friends, you thought she was your ace boot, your BFF, as we call it, right? But guess what? She, it, you end up finding that she going with your friend, the guy that you like, or some, some drama I'm talking about, you know, just somebody lied at you at, oh, at work, anything like that. But let me tell you, don't worry about that. Because think about it. I truly believe that God will send whoever needs to be in your life. It should not be with confusion because he is not the author of confusion. That's what his word says. Now, what we do is we twist things with the wrong motive for our glory. And you know, that's not going to work anyway, because he is the one we need to give all the honor and glory to him. Okay. Now, the next thing is, let letting go now that's you gotta you gotta let it go you gotta forgive people uh because i hate to say it some people have dead and gone some they they in another relationship and you still haven't forgave them so you have to forgive them and and god will take care of the rest i'm guaranteed whatever somebody and my mom always says whatever somebody does in the dark will come to the light in due time so nobody's getting away with nothing Okay, I, we guarantee that <laughs> whatever you sow, you're going to reap. That's what the Bible says. So you're going to get it. I'm not wishing bad on anybody. Please don't take this out of context. But the thing is, what we need to do is stand firm in his word to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do. Because a lot of people are watching us as well. Our young people need examples. So we need to do what's right. Okay. Now, if there are any questions, if I'm if I'm going and if a question now, I'd like uh, if anybody have a question or something now. You know, I, I please, please. Uh, the last thing is, we have to bless others and do good. We we, we got to do that. I'm gonna look up my, the other scriptures that I had here. I'm sorry, my iPad, my iPad trying to talk too. <laughs> okay, now Ephesians four twenty six says, "Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on anger." Now, in the old church, you know they did tell us don't be angry either. But here the Bible it says right here. Now, if you want to get, if you has the kid, let me say how the kids say, if you're gonna cop an anger or something like the kids say, um, do not let it sin. Meaning, don't become violent. Don't go to sleep on it, husband and wife. You need to talk about it, have communication because there's two people becoming one. So you're not gonna agree on everything. It's okay to disagree. That's an important thing that needs to happen with our marriages or any, even a business or negotiation or anything. It's okay to disagree. And we got it right here at Ephesians 4 and 6. It said, do not let the sun, and we know what the sun, when the sun, sun set, don't let it go down. Say, hey, I'm sorry. And be a, be a man or a woman to, sometimes you have to stand up, and even if you're not wrong, to say, okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> Because you don't want strife in your home. Because guess what? Your kids, they notice it now. Now don't 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 get it twisted. The kids notice when we're in when we're not agreeing. When when somebody go to sleep and slam the door in the bathroom. Uh uh see y'all didn't know I was in your in your backyard, right? Now, Romans 14, 1 also says, and for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him but not in a quarrel over opinion. Now that goes on a whole nother angle. What that is really saying, if somebody is challenging you what you believe, if somebody is challenging you in the scripture, and that's coming more uh, uh, prominent now because we get to, we're in the last days, people are going to be, it's going to be false prophets and people saying all this about the Bible and this is what the Bible says, but look at their fruit. And I'm not trying to be mean, but look at their fruit. Do, are they, do they have prosperity in every area they like? You'll know, you'll know who's doing the right thing, okay, by their fruit. <laughs> so you ain't, you don't have to guess if they're a false prophet or not, okay? All right. Now, the other one I wanted to touch on, we did talk about prayer. I wanted to bring in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatsoever you ask, believe that we receive it and it's yours. We touched on it a little bit, but I wanted to make sure we have to believe it, okay? We have to believe. You know, also... 
I, we, you know, I know everybody's saying this. Why is this happening to me? The lady down the street got all this. Don't worry about the lady down the street. Don't worry about the lady down the street. We need to work. What Isaiah 40 and 31 says, I'm just taking the B part out. It says, wait, wait on the Lord. We need to wake up, wait, wait on the Lord. Now you may get your blessing suddenly. You may get it next week. You may get it two, 10 years from now, but guess what? It's always on time. It's always on time because we, he, he supplies all our needs according to his riches and glory. We know the word says that. So we have to stand on his promises, stand fast on his promises and believe whatever he says, it will come to pass. It will. We can't go one side to the other. We have to stay firm in the word. And then I got to bring in Psalm 37, three, and also my favorite Proverbs three, five, and six. It says, trust God. That's what it, well, that's what it's saying. Psalms 37, three, trust God and do good. Now you're doing good. Maybe buy somebody a, co a cup of coffee. It may be just speaking to people when you go in your office and you, you, you stop doing it. It could be, um, in your favorite charity, you know, we know what good and evil, we know the difference. So when people ask you, well, what that mean? Do good, bless other people. When you see a mom in line that can't find the money for her, for some milk, pay for it. I've done that several times. I'm not boasting at all. Please don't, you know, misunderstand. I'm not boasting by saying that. But I, I, I'm a cheerful giver, and that's what the word said. And, and knock on wood, I have a P by all my bills, and a P is being paid. <laughs> and you know, God will supply all of our needs. He will actually perfect everything that's concerning you. Okay? Now, let me see. I'm trying to make sure somebody, uh, what is he saying? I do nothing. What did he say? Real 11. I don't understand what he's saying. But anyway, yeah, you have to make sure. Well, I think what he's trying to say, he does nothing. Well, you kind of have to make sure when you do nothing, when somebody does something wrong. Yeah, you don't take an action or towards them. I mean, God would tell you when you need to talk to them because it's a right time and a right place to talk to people if they hurt you. Because if you're going to go there with strife and fussing and, you know, I'm going to say the word cursing and fighting, that's you're not ready to talk. And let me let me address this. What if they don't want to talk? You just say, God, I went to them. I tried to approach them so I can ask for forgiveness. And if they don't forgive you, you've done you've done your part. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Because some people are not where you are spiritually. And we have to accept that. But we don't supposed to fight and curse and. You know, all this thing. You have to do what's safe for you. If you think you're in danger, you know, let the police know. I'm just being honest that you need protection. I mean, just just don't do stuff that's out of the will of God, meaning trying to hurt somebody, trying to poison somebody with something. You know, don't do that. But we need to make sure our vessel is right. What we putting in our vessel, what we putting out of our mouth. I always talk about our gates and what the gates is, is your eyes, which what even you smelling what you eating and what you speaking. And of course, what you hear. So, you know, as my mom always said, God wanted us to do more listening than talking because we only got one mouth. <laughs> but really, we need to listen more because guess what? We may have, and I, I wanted to leave this to the end. Guess what? We may have perceived the situation wrong. We may have perceived it incorrectly. We may think the person have done us wrong and they they are ambivalent of what you're talking about. They have no idea what you're saying. So that means I perceive the thing wrong. And the word says, watch out of how you perceive a thing. What we need to perceive things are good, what's lovely, what's pure. We need to, what the word says, concentrate, pay attention to those things because we don't want those things to go from our mind to turn up in our heart. You do not want a hardened heart. And you know what the word says about that. If you, whatever you put in your heart, guess what? Eventually you're going to be saying and acting out on those things and you don't want to do that. Now, let me see what he's saying. He says, so, 
So you have to make sure you keep your temple clean. Okay. God will tell you what you need to do and what you not need to do. I think, and then forgive me for saying this, and it's kind of radical. I think we take things too far in context sometimes. We'll say, well, oh, well, I don't know what to do. Guess what? God is leading you what to do. He's telling you to say something positive. He's telling you to say something that is good. He's not telling you to curse and fight. He's not telling you that. That's your our own self doing that. Okay. So think of positive things. Positive things actually leads to positive action. So I had to say that because I know we probably was wondering, so what do I do? You know, because we may have perceived it wrong. Now, sometimes I, hurt comes actually in the church. Yeah. Sometimes you'll be people in the church because they say they have to do what? Make sure they renew their mind. And everybody is not renewing their mind at the same level. Everybody is not at the same stage of, de of their destiny. Everybody is not in the same stage of their process and journey with God, even though they're saved. So you just got to make sure you keep yourself right, okay? Because people in the church can hurt you. And, and as the old people say, it's nothing like church hurt, okay? And that's true. I've been through that. But you got to stick to God. You got to believe what he's saying. You got to trust him. And guess what? You got to walk out your journey, your purpose that he has given you. Okay? I'm real. Any questions? I kind of went a little bit more there. But the most important thing that we, we get in the cross is we need to do these three major things we need to do. Of course, there's other things we can do. You know, meditate in the word. You know, I didn't specifically say that, but you have to do that. But the three we want to focus on tonight is prayer. Have a relationship with God and pray with him. Pray to him. And he will direct you what you need to do. He will lead you and guide you. You got to let it go. Trust in him. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in him and lean not to our own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct our path. That's what it's saying. Amplified even says that your insight, whatever your insight may not be the right thing. So we need to make sure we renew our mind with him that we don't perceive a thing in a wrong way. And then the last thing is we need to bless others and do good. That's what we got to do. And we got to do that on a daily basis. And it's a process to get to where you, where God wants you to be. So don't beat yourself up because of course the word says no condemnation. So it's a process. It's a process. Now, does anybody have any questions? We don't keep you long, but we give you some heavy meat. As the old people say, we give you a lot of knowledge and, uh, that you can actually, I know a lot of people probably went to their own Bible studies. Uh, I did as well today, but this is just something on my heart. And we're going to continue this every uh, Wednesday at uh, the same time. Um, if God willing, this, yeah, the same time, unless he tell me to change it, he hasn't. Um, but if you... We want everybody to connect with each other and please connect with me. Um, I, I wear a lot of hats. I'm a minister. I'm an anesthesiologist. I'm a publisher and an author. Um, I'm a media personality um, of Good Deeds Radio and Television Show. We're based out of Atlanta. So if you want us to showcase or spotlight your business, get in contact with us as well. Uh, it's www.reneesunday.com. And I'll put it in the chat. And I'm going to actually go back and make sure I connect with everybody on Twitter. And I thank you guys for all the, the hearts. I really appreciate that. But I love you, love you, love you. And we're going to pray out. And if you have any questions, if you want um, prayer requests or anything like that, you can send those through the website and we will touch and agree with you th with that. Because sometimes you need people. That's what the Bible says. When two or three get together, he in the midst. So it's okay to ask people to pray for you, but make sure, and again, discern if that's the person you need to trust with your personal information. I'm just being real. <laughs> I'm just saying the truth. You See, I, I have to tell you the truth. I can't lie to you, okay? And our Heavenly Father, we come to you. We just thank you for the time we were together. We just thank you for the people that took time to listen to us live and the archive. We just thank you, Lord, that you are first in our life, that we will continue to lean and depend on you. When somebody has done us wrong, we will forgive them in the name of Jesus because we need to do that to get that away from us so we can actually walk in what you want us to walk in, to be able to be a living vessel, ambassador for work for you and for you only. 
thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And we bless our families, Lord. This new year, we're just going to get it, get it, Lord. We're just going to get what you want for us. And we're going to actually bless others in everything we do and say. These are not a blessing, our son. Jesus' name, Christ is my redeemer. Amen. 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 Wait a minute. Somebody's saying something. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm sorry. The website is uh, reneesunday.com. I actually put it in the chat here. They, uh, and if you, uh, yeah, connect with me. Let me see. Is that, did I do it? In, do that? Yeah. ReneeSunday.com. I put it there. Well, I love you guys. And we'll have the, um, the recording up in a minute. If you know anybody that this would be a great for them, of course, share it. And again, I'm, I'm serious. If you need any assistance from us, uh, I'm a, I'm a good researcher. So if I don't know how to get what you need resources, or if you need, uh, any, anything that God has led you that you need prayer or anything, I will find a person that can actually help you. I love you. Love you. Love you. And again, my name is minister Dr. Renee Sunday. I see you next week. Okay. All right. I love you. I love you guys. Bye. <laughs>